What's up, guys and girls? This is another episode of More Than Fitness. Thank you so much for tuning in. We have got a continually growing audience and a group of people within our community that really support this podcast, so I want to thank you. If it's your first time tuning in, do me a favor and go ahead and subscribe to this podcast channel. Um, and and you know what? Throw someone a bone. If you enjoy this episode to follow or you've enjoyed previous episodes, please share this with some friends and or family and encourage them to learn more about the people involved within the sport of CrossFit and also some behind the scenes. Nonetheless, today, folks, I've got Jake Douglas. Now, Jake punched his ticket out of Oceania just about 10 days prior to this interview. He is about to have his rookie debut at the CrossFit Games, and he has per been pursuing the CrossFit Games since about 2015. Yes, right. This has been an eight-year journey for this particular individual. And in this interview, he talks about the value in the long game, how he's learned so much as an HWPO athlete, getting to talk with uh, people like Steve Fawcett, who's his coach, Matt Fraser, who has, of course, overseen a lot of his development, and even Matt O'Keefe, and having those people in his corner and how it's helped him navigate his experience, both as a competitive athlete, but also a career athlete. Trying to make this a career as an affiliate owner, he is the owner of Snake CrossFit, which he started, I believe, back in about 2014 and founded himself. He talks about the struggles owning and running an affiliate, but also trying to pursue the CrossFit Games as a competitor and really what it's like living a life with a family, a partner, and children and being able to be present in all of those instances. I'm not going to lie. This has been one of my favorite interviews thus far. I didn't know a lot about Jake prior to this interview, and he definitely gained a big fan in myself, um, and I can't wait to watch him take on the CrossFit Games uh, later uh, you know, at the end of, at the end of July as it will come very quickly, but nonetheless, I'm going to waste less of your time and help you get into this interview. We talk about all the things that I mentioned and even more. And I think you're going to love every moment, moment, ladies and gentlemen, Jake Douglas. What is up, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of more than fitness. I am joined today by Jake Douglas, who recently punched his first ticket to the CrossFit games. Jake, how you doing? I'm good, brother. I'm real good. Good. Well, it's it's great to sit down and get to chat with you, man. There's a lot of stuff that I want to unpack today. Um, you know, I, I, I got I to gotta jump in by first saying that you're a big rig. You're a big fella. I, I see you on social media. I see you're a well muscle bound individual, but with a very nice, kind baby face. Has this always been the case for you growing up, man? That's the first thing that jumped into my mind. I was like, man, has this guy always had a physique like this? Because, wow. Or was this something that you found as you got into fitness in the CrossFit journey? Um, no, yeah, probably. Like, as I hit puberty, I sort of got bigger, basically. Like, I was a pretty small kid, um, and I was pretty late to bloom, like, in maturity. So as soon as I sort of, you know, I think around year nine, something like that, I sort of, around that 15 years old, I just... Started putting on size, man. And I've been doing gym work since, like, I can remember nine years old going and doing weights. You know, it's just something I've always been into. It's been my whole life. That's amazing. So tell me then, was was this something that was instilled in you from, like, your parents? Were your parents very fit, very active throughout the course of your childhood? Yeah, both my parents were, like, big on just sport in general. So, like, my dad played football and things like that, and he always just sort of stayed fit. We always had weights around the house and it was always something that was accessible to me I saw it so I just touched it you know um and always had sort of that neighbor or that person in your neighborhood that did weights or training so I would go down there as a kid and just muck around in the gym you know I do man I do I, I have similar experiences growing up I remember both my my dad my stepmom and even my mom all, all in and out of the gym at different periods of my life and I remember just being a kid kind of hanging out there probably not supposed to be there right like young enough where yeah. other adults were probably looking at me like yo you probably shouldn't be here but nonetheless it's like it's a great place to be especially as a young kid because for you it's still play right um, and then if you can spark that interest and that passion early, then look at, look at the fruits of it for you. Um, you know, now you're an affiliate owner, which of course we want to dive into. You're now have punched your first opportunity to go compete in person, uh, at the CrossFit games this year. Um, you got to tell me how, how did that feel? What was the moment like when you realized that you were going to the games this year? Um, yeah, it's really surreal for me. Like it was something that since 
2015, I decided like far out, I really want to try and do that, you know, and then um, f- having finally just it sort of happened and the way that it happened and the things that happened in the few years leading up to it was this just, yeah, I, I still can't explain it. It just didn't, sort of didn't feel real. Getting, I'd, I'd heard it in my mind so many times, you know, like getting your name called out. I'd watched it in the stands for so many years, that person get their name called out. Um, and then to be in that situation and not know because of the points and it was really special. And, and I got to share it with my daughter at the at the time, you know. So that was, I'm sure that I'll look back on that and that's going to be the, the fondest memory of it, standing with her as um, daddy achieved his goal, you know. Oh, I do know, man. I do know. And that's got to be such a special journey to be on with your family, um, who, who's clearly, you know, in this process, just as invested as you are. You're the one in the gym grinding and putting in the time. But of course, we know that this journey takes a team for everybody and, uh, you know, that your partner and your children are part of the journey with you. Um, you know, for you, you mentioned this, Jake, you said it was kind of surreal. Um, so, and you have yet to go, right? So I don't want to, I don't want to pretend that you know the feeling yet to step onto the game's floor, because I'm going to share with you, man, it is certainly unlike anything that you've ever experienced. That first test that you're going to get to experience in the stadium, right? Like inside that arena with the crowd loud and just doing their thing. Like there'll be nothing like it. But in that moment, you mentioned it was almost like it didn't exist. Was it what you expected it to feel like, right? Like you mentioned that the buildup was almost from 2015, man. And then you get there and it's like, cool, they call your name. Was it, was it what you pictured or was it almost like a little let down? Like you got to share with me what that was, what that was like. Honestly, man, it felt better than I thought it would feel, you know, okay. like it just in internally as it happened, I was just really, you know, I'm not a guy that's been super proud of myself in, you know, I've played big games of football or something and then walked away and be like, ah, oh, you know, I could have done this or I could have done that. And I've always been decently hard on myself. But at that moment, I was just really proud, man. And like, that's something for me that doesn't happen often. But uh, at that moment, I was like, really, you know, yeah, just a proud moment. Oh, yeah, there's there's no doubt about it, man. Um and, 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 and the pride is something that you should feel because, you know, from your competitive journey, your background is 2015. Of course, you'd done CrossFit prior to that for many years. But 2015, you said, hey, I want to be a competitor. I want to chase this thing um, for it to be an eight year journey for you from the time that you said, hey, I want to I want to compete um, to to then fast forward, of course, to you punching this ticket and hearing your name called. Um, was it almost more of like a sense of relief than it was? um being extremely happy yeah there, there was definitely some relief there especially because you you would know what any competitor out there would know that the sacrifices that you do you know um sacrifice the the things that you sacrifice to, to chase your goal the time that you don't spend or or the hours in the gym things like that um yeah it, it was definitely a relief to think all right this is this is what i was working towards it paid off um that that part of it was definitely relieving. Yeah. And and I and I bring that up specifically because I, I do know what it's like. I do know what it's like to almost have to force your hand with patience, um, being a little bit patient. And I know what it's like from a coaching perspective. And I have athletes, Jake, I gotta be honest with you, man. I got athletes that feel so entitled that they'll be like, yo, after three years, man, I want to make it to the CrossFit games. And I'm like, hey, that's a great goal. But I'm here to tell you now that if you want to be in this and you have to be successful, you've got to be willing to play the long game and you've got to structure your training and your mindset and expectations around that. Otherwise there's going to be other athletes that simply outlast you. And I got to say, and give you many kudos, man, the eight year journey is one where it's like you, you, you knocked at the door and you were close and you were there. You knew you had the fitness, but you had some ups and downs injuries and different things kind of knocked you off. What was it about this pursuit of the CrossFit games that helped you stay committed to the process i think in the end it was i just couldn't let it go man like do you know what I, mean? I had done it for so long as well that it was like this is I, i'm not going to quit on it like i just couldn't i couldn't quit on it because i had like my kids and i had my community and i had these other people that were pretty well invested with me and for me it was that i'm not going to i couldn't quit on it because it's something that I still wanted to do and how could I, you know, give someone else advice to, to persevere if I'm not willing to do it, if that makes sense. So that was sort of my mindset, especially over the last like two or three years, um, I had to come back from a more recent injury. 
and that was really my mindset of it. It was like, well, what would I tell my daughter in this or my son in this situation or, you know, one of my athletes? Um, I would say persevere. You know, if it's something you want to do, keep going with it. So at the end of the day, I, I got a good talking to by some of my mentors and, and that was the advice I was given. I was like, you know what, it's, it's very true. So that's where I'm at. That's so awesome, man. And I know that you are a part of HWPO, Hard Work Pays Off. Um, from a from a training perspective, you're a part of that camp. Do you work directly with Matt, Jake? Like, what what's your relationship like there? Do you follow the online template, the programming that they offer? Yeah, I, I work directly with Steve, Steve Fawcett. Um, okay, Steve, I, and I forget that Steve's yeah. a part of the team, man. He he. he yeah. in, in my mind, I, I forgot that he was there. So that's awesome because he's not you know on the other side of the world from you. Yeah, man, that's right. So we FaceTime whenever I need. Um, Matt was awesome. We had a good FaceTime before semis. Um, just ran through some stuff, things that I was thinking. And, um, yeah, Jake as well. He's always available. And O'Keefe, they're, they're legends, man. They're, they're really good to me. Yeah. I love it, man. How did how did that begin for you? How, how did, what, did you reach out to them? Did they reach out to you? How did this relationship begin? So in 2016, Fraser actually came to Australia. And okay. my partner bought me a ticket to that. And this is like, like, as I said, in 15, I decided I wanted to compete. So she did it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go stack up and see where I, see where I fit with like Matt Frazier, you know? So we drove down and, uh, and I just hit it off with him. I got along with him really well, sort of hung out all weekend. Same with O'Keefe. Um, was just always chatting and, and buddying up. And then at the end of the weekend, he gave me his email and said, look, if you need anything, reach out. So literally over, you know, the space of, five, six, seven years. I've just always spoken to O'Keefe and messaged if I needed advice. Um, as I got closer and closer and the games really started feeling like they were within reach, um, I just messaged O'Keefe and said, like, you know, I feel like I'm really close here. W- what can I do? Like, is there anything I can do moving forward? And, yeah, we just FaceTimed and I, I wanted to move to um, HWPO and then potentially, you know, get over to the States, have a camp, all those things that are pretty hard when you're in Australia. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how that sort of happened. And yeah, I think that it's helped me a lot. You know, they've, they've given me a lot outside of just fitness, just for confidence and mindset, stuff like that. That's great, man. And I think that's, that's a wonderful topic for even, you know, this podcast more than fitness where I understand. And, and I think a lot of the, the OGs within our community understand that in order to make it to a level that, that you make it to, uh, to punch your ticket to the CrossFit Games, even to be year after year present within the semifinal or the regional type floor, um, you've got to have a lot more going on than just the tangible fitness measurables, right? Hey, your overhead squat matters, Jake. That's great that, you know, you're so strong or, hey, your one mile time trial certainly matters. It's going to apply to other things. But what you got going on between the years, man, is tremendously a make or break in regards to competing at a high level. When we consider that and, and your experience even let's, you know, take a step back to a week and a half ago when you're out there on the competition floor, laying it all on the line. What were some of the things mentally that you brought with you onto the competition floor? Like, how did you get yourself prepared for test one and then onward throughout the, throughout the weekend? Yeah. So this one more than ever, you probably as a competitor, like to say that you take it event by event, but I had never truly done that. And this was a competition where I was like, all right, this has to be event by event for me. Um, And I think um, maybe I'm just a slow learner, but it's taken me this long to learn how to play the game. That's CrossFit. Like, I think um, for a lot of time competing, I would just go out there and try and do my best in every workout and try and either have the blinkers on or try and win my heat or whatever it might have been. Um, but this year, more than others, it feels like I've actually learned how to play the game, understanding who's mm. around me, what other heats were, um, to to really scrap for points. Um, regard, you know, maybe in the past, if I wasn't going to win the workout, I would just try and focus on me. But having an acute awareness of, what 10th place got because that that matters to me now if they were third i need to try and beat that because that four points is still valuable um little things like that is something that i change so just the ability to play the game uh and then just you know ignoring the leaderboard trusting myself um doing my best in every event yeah it's interesting man and you mentioned a point that's i think really nuanced where you're saying strategically you are dialed 
in regards to being very aware of what other people are doing each and every test. Right. But in the same token, you're doing your best to ignore the leaderboard because it's kind of like, you've got to remain this very present, right? Like you can't be the leaderboard actually is from the past, right? Cause when you're worried about your score, it already happened. So mm. it's, there's certain things that you can only control looking forward and in the present. So once you actually go back to review the leaderboard, it's in the past now. So it's time to actually move on to what is next. Is it test three? Is it test four? Right? So how, how have you learned to navigate that? Because I can even tell you from a coach's perspective, boy, is that hard to try to actually communicate to an athlete when it's like, Hey, maybe they didn't have the best score in their last test or Hey, maybe they hit a home run and they want to celebrate. And I'm like, Whoa, Whoa, we got more business to handle. How did, how did you navigate doing that? So I actually started looking at it. Um, you know, with business, how you start to do your figures, but you get rid of the dollar sign. Mm. Like, have you heard of that? So then it takes the stress away from it. It's just like no yeah. dollar sign. They just, just numbers. Yep. Right. So then I started looking at the leaderboard like that. It was just all I was all I was concerned about was the numbers gap between where I wanted to be or where I was and and what does that make sense? The people around me. So all I needed to know was all right, I've got fifteen points here and then there's thirty points there. And then as the heats are going, I'm just looking like, okay, well I know what my time is, I know what this is. Sweet, best score is this. I'm not even gonna go for that. Um, I just need to make sure that I'm somewhere around these guys um, and I'm going to scrap for every point that I can get that's within my best effort. So somewhere around, you know, 30 seconds, a minute of my time. Um, and that's how I just started looking at it. So instead of worrying whether I was sitting second or fourth or whatever, it was more so, all right, if I'm sitting in six after day one, that doesn't matter. Am I, I'm four points out. There's only four points in it. Sweet. So I know I need to try and beat these guys in this next workout. And then hopefully some people get between us trying, trying to figure out what's in my hands, you know, the controllables. Yeah. 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 And I, and I think that's amazing, man. It, 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 it definitely, even though you self-admit, you're like, Hey man, maybe I'm a slow learner. I don't know. But I think that those lessons do take time and do take reps to understand, yeah. right? It's like you show up for your first competition. You're not naturally going to have that that awareness for the long game or the big game, we should say, when it comes to like, hey, yes, your your score matters in each test, but really, once we accumulate seven of these bad boys, that's that's what we need to be most concerned with. Um, was your coach able to be present there with you when you competed in at, the, at the semifinals? No, Steve had the uh, Europe the week after, but I've got a really good team around me, and I've done it for you know nearly a decade now. Um, I train every day with uh, another high level girl, Georgia Pryor. So we sort of help each other out. And we've also got the guy that manages my gym, Matt, that'll come in and he just does, you know, he'll hold a water bottle or he'll tell me a score. He's just like the guy, you know? So we've got a really good, um, yeah, really good group there that, that we, that we work a semifinal well at. And yeah. And I asked that question, man, because I think I see, you know, getting an experience now within the last two, three years to be on the semifinal scene with athletes, myself competing after, you know, being a while from the time I competed as an individual. So like being in that atmosphere, it's so much more, um, hands on with coaches and athletes. Right. And I say that where it's like the vets, the vets in the space. And honestly, the guys at the top and the girls at the top, they're not necessarily having everything fed to them like rep for rep and time for time. Like they're not like, Hey, 20 seconds of this, 10 seconds of this, go do this for a minute, go rest for two minutes and then do this again. Right. Like they, they almost have this, this confidence in the way they warm up, the way that they prepare. Um, and you can see a lot of young athletes on the other hand with coaches that are more so very in control from rest intervals to supplementation to everything. Right. Um, clearly, throughout this time you've you've learned a lot and and have your own confidence in the way that you warm up and prepare you mentioned that you got a whole team around you um over the years because it's been eight years since you've been in this competitive space man pursuing this goal what's some of the things that you've seen evolve and change like what i just mentioned like the warm-up area and coaches involved like what are some things that just stand out to you as you've pursued the crossfit games oh man i feel like so much has changed since i started in it um, I do remember though going to regionals and they, and the, they remember they went through that year where there was no coaches passes. Yeah, like, I don't know if you remember. I had the no, and oh, that yeah. was like my first actual regionals. So like okay. I came in space without like I didn't know a competitor. Like where I live is out in the bush in town, so I'd never met a regionals guy, let alone a games athlete. 
I um, just ro- ro- rolled into the city and um, obviously I, I had a coach, Big Bad Bobby D at the time. I was following raw strength. But okay. he wasn't allowed out. So I, I was just I'm left to my own devices. You're on your own, yeah. There. But that's probably the best thing that could have happened to me as well because I had to had to adapt and, you know, I made so many mistakes that weekend and so things like that. Um, the professionalism of the sport, like you see young guys coming through that aren't that don't even have jobs, you know, right? Like, and they're they're making with with sponsors or online or, or whoever they're making income. Like I, I was a plumber and I ran my gym and did all these things. I'm in a position now where training's full time, but that's only sure. because my parents can allow that to happen. I still, you know, not making a wage from sponsors like some of these people, but. Yeah, I just think the professionalism is what's, what's really, really grown in the last like eight years. Yeah, and, and it's it's evolved tremendously, man. And honestly, it's a continually ongoing thing. It's something that I'm hopeful and and pray for that continues to go in that direction. Because, of course, I, I, I love this sport and I want to see it grow. And I want to see athletes get the opportunity to be full-time exercisers. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to see them be full-time CrossFit athletes so that we can really see where we can push the human body. You know, when we when I got into CrossFit, it was the tagline was forging elite fitness. And for us to do that at the top tier, my man, it's going to have to take a lot of support, but brands are going to have to also be successful by investing into these athletes, right? So if their personal brands can grow, hopefully opportunities like this, people getting on the podcast, people getting to hear your voice, Jake, and see what you're doing and what you're doing in your lifestyle, hopefully that continues to trend in this way. Um, Man, I want to I want to ask you a couple questions about the the tests themselves, though. From a week and a half ago, yeah. when you when you took place at, at this semifinals, of course, we know that um, it's a first time HQ had a direct hand for the breadth of the test, which means from start to finish. Um, what when when you saw uh, the test get dropped, all seven of them, you know, for the first time in completion, were you like, "Yes, I'm going." Did you know that they were like written up and you were like, okay, this is my opportunity? Yeah, I did. I, when, when they were announced, I even sent this to, to Steve as it happened. It was like even things that necessarily aren't great for me, they were partnered with things that are really good for me. So that's a really good feeling. And you don't get that often, you know. You usually have you one. Don't, you out. don't. <laughs> um. So yeah, I was really, really excited as I saw that. And I was like, well, that's not, that's a weakness, but it's partnered with the strength. So I, can, I know where I can push these workouts. Um, and, I, and I felt really prepared for this event um, mentally and physically. So yeah, as they were announced, I was excited. And yeah, so I had a sneaky suspicion that I'd go all right. Yeah, man. And I think that's a great feeling. You know, as an athlete, I remember having a similar experience in 2015, the year that I did compete as an individual um, at the CrossFit Games, seeing the regional workouts get announced and being like, there's just no reason why I shouldn't go. Right? Like in my mind, I was like, if I just do what I'm capable of, there's no reason I shouldn't go. And for me, what that did, and, I, and I'd love to hear what it did for you, Jake, but for me, it actually allowed me to compete relaxed. Like, yes, there was stress. Yes, I felt pressure, but I was just like, I actually don't have to be phenomenal or great because I'm good at these things here. So I can just do them. You know what I'm saying? Was it similar for you? Man, exactly what you just said. I remember be- as they were announced that I was sitting with uh, with my guys here and I was like, I don't even have to outperform myself. I don't think that there's a time in any of the workouts that I need to say, all right, I'm going to have to dig really deep or, or ask for something that maybe I haven't done before. If I just do my bare minimum and just – and maybe even 90% of what I'm capable of, it'll yep. be okay, you know. It's not like I had to go into the snatch event and think, oh, I'm going to have to PR my snatch. I never had a moment with that, with any of the workouts that I thought, you know, I'm really going to have to dig deep. And I think that's a that's the best way to be confident and be able to go into them so relaxed, you know, knowing that all I have to do is what I'm capable of. I don't have to outperform. Yeah, and, that, and, that, and that's in a beautiful feeling, man. And I think, you know, it's not only luck of the draw, right? When people hear this, they're going to be like, oh, well, cool. He got lucky. And it's like, sure, 
there, there's a little bit of that for all of us, right? Because even to be healthy, like, man, we're blessed and man, we're lucky just to be healthy, to actually make it to a semi, to be able to compete. Right. Like I know that feeling. And I know that you also know that feeling. Um, but it's also like in your preparation, right? You attack your weaknesses headlong and you try to do it in such a way so that when, Hey, these tests are released, guess what? there's no rock for us to need to go hide behind, right? Like, because we, we actually know that we've been working on these skills, even if they aren't the best, like you mentioned, maybe we get thrown a bone and they're coupled with something that we're decent at, right? Like that's, that's kind of the way that we all hope from them play out. Um, I, what, which test was your favorite? Um, I actually, from a, from a pride standpoint, it was actually test six, which is the overhead squat one. Yep. But obviously um, the, the heavy snatch, like any, anything heavy. I, I love that. Um, but yeah, no, it was definitely the, yeah, event six. I, um, you know, I tripped a few times on the floor that I didn't do in training and I, okay. I felt like it would have been a fork in the road for me of, right. This is either how I make the games or this is, this is how I miss out right now. So I had mm. to take a moment and walk back and, and sort of collect myself and stay present. So wh- when I did that, it sort of, yeah, got me over a mental hurdle, I think of like, all right, you know, I did what I needed to, to do there. Yeah. And I, and I love that you picked that one because, you know, not that it was the one that, that you just killed the field on, but it was one that you literally were just like, Hey, this is where I executed. This is the one where I knew I would need to execute smoothly. And you even had a couple hiccups, like you mentioned. So let me ask you then when, In those moments, you know, clearly the spotlight's on you at this point within the course of the weekend. It's test six, man. We only got one more left. It's it's test one of the final day. You know, you only got one more opportunity left after that score. You trip up on the floor there. And I think you said a couple times, perhaps. What is it then Mm -hmm. going through your head? Like, how do you cue yourself to stay calm and stay in the moment to execute versus it could have got progressively worse, man. And who knows? You could have got several minutes there on those pirouettes yeah so i actually lost about nearly 90 seconds at that portion on those three pirouettes just from from tripping or touching the line and yeah i actually after i tripped a second or a third time i i just walked away and i just i literally left my lane like walked all the way down the end came all the way back um and yeah i just had to i guess just have a, have a real conversation with myself of like, hey, is this how you're going to miss out on the games? Like a, a handstand pirouette? Is, is this what it's going to be? Um, and then the other part was like, well, you know, the, the guy I needed to beat or wanted to beat is gone. Like, that's a way. But how many people am I going to let fall between us now? You know, every second matters. Every pirouette matters. So I just really brought it back down to um, in the moment. And that's, that really helped me. And I think moving forward, that's a good lesson for me. I think it's a great lesson for you, man. And and again, one that you can only get when you're there and it's on the line, right? Like the stakes have to be high and you've got to experience it. Like you've been there now. You're like, Hey, I, I had some failure and guess what? It worked out fine. Like I was able to stay in the moment. I was able to execute under high pressure. You proved that to yourself. And I think this is a, a healthy conversation. It's, it's interesting because people, Jake often ask me, Hey, how do I gain confidence or How do I become disciplined or how do I X, Y, and Z? And it's like, you know, I tell people all the time, you have to prove it to yourself, right? You can't just make up this fake confidence in yourself that you're going to do amazing things when you have yet to actually do something amazing and prove it to yourself. And not that you hadn't done anything amazing up until that point, my man, that's not what I'm saying, right? But what I'm saying is that that moment with your back to the wall, when you failed and recovered from it, like that's a, that's powerful. And that's got to give you a lot of confidence. Yeah, that was that's the most confidence building moment that I took from the weekend for sure. Was just um, believing in yourself. Mm. So tell me what that what's that look like for you this summer then? Like that belief in yourself. Now you're about to go into the unknown and unknowable. What are you most excited about with games training? Man, look, you know, I I have a really good understanding that like my age. Um, I'm not going to be a 10 year games guy, right? It's just not going to happen. But I feel that also gives me a sense of freedom with it. Like I'm, I just, I just want to get to Madison and just kick in the door. You know, I just want to, when I, when I got a home run, I want to swing for it. If, um, if it's going to be bad, I'm going to just grind on it. Um, 
and yeah, I just would see where I stack up after the weekend, you know, if I come a- anywhere, it does like I come last or first, I, I just want to walk away and be like, you know what? I just did that. And that's good. And, um, and not regret shying away from the pain or, or anything like that. So that's, that's my, that's my focus, you know, just event by event, try and soak it in something that I've wanted to do for so long. And I'm sure that the next eight weeks are going to fly by. So yeah, it's just about each day, soak it up. Yeah, man. And that's it. I think that's literally, if I could give any advice, that would be the one piece of advice that I have for you is soak it up, man. Uh, There is no greater opportunity than to be one of the 40 people that gets to have your season be so long, right? Like there's, there's a, a, a very, special thing to me uh anytime i've worked with an athlete or anytime i've been going myself that you know you you get to train for an extra eight to ten weeks that everybody else has already packed it in they don't have that opportunity they're already getting ready for 2024 man and here you are with this chance to soak up the unknown and unknowable style of training you're going to be outside more you're going to be in the ocean or you're going to be in the lake wherever you're training at for your swim and all that other kind of fun stuff and it's like man that prep and then the experience there in madison is going to be Unlike anything else, I love that you're planning on hitting home runs when you can and, and, and even enjoying the moment when, like you mentioned, it might not be something that you know you can hit a home run on, but you'll be willing to sit on it and grind a little bit. Um, this is going to sound like a strange question, man. And, and I know we, we just we're on a high note, so we're excited. But through your eight years and your grind and you mentioned your age, um, you mentioned things that are very relevant, not in a negative way, but just a real way what if you don't punch your ticket this year to the CrossFit games? Like what if that moment didn't happen for you on the floor this year and celebrating with your daughter and your family? Like what would have that felt like for you? Is that just another step in the, like another step in the process for you or would it have been like a, a great enough letdown where you're like, oh, I'm done with this thing. Like how does it stack up versus all your years of gearing up to compete? Yeah. Um, no, look, I, it never would have been a matter of like, Dah, I'm packing it in, that's it, I'm done. Um, all it would have been was a couple of weeks off and then a conversation of like if my if my partner's still, you know, willing to live the same year that we just lived, uh, are our kids happy with the way that um, dad goes to work? What value am I bringing to George, my training partner and my athlete? What, mm. um, what value am I providing for my community by doing what I'm doing? And it, that, that would have just been the conversation. It would have never been a matter of, uh, right, I didn't make it, you know, stuff this, I'm out. It just really would have been, um, this is something I want to do. It, can we afford to try and do it again? Um, it, does, does it serve everyone? Because even after I'd done that, I wasn't, you know, before the last event, we went men and women. So I was in, I was in the warm-up area getting myself ready, um, I really didn't have any conversation with Georgia prior her event, and uh, yeah. and I feel really bad about that. I couldn't help her prep for her final event, but I was in, you know, I was, I had a I had a game ticket in my hand as I as I walked out, and I was going to make sure I still had that in my That's hand right. as, as I walked in there. Um, so yeah, so I feel bad about that, and that that would have been something that uh, potentially if I didn't bring that ticket back off the floor with me, that it would have been a conversation with Georgia like, hey, were you like, where were you at with that last event? And she actually came out and smashed it. So maybe she doesn't even need me anymore. So, <laughs> but you know, think about hey, that, that conversation. That's awesome. And, and I, and I just wanted to ask that question because even in this, in this time, right, we're still kind of swallowing the hard pill to realize that there are some vets that have been in our sport for a while that aren't punching their ticket back to the CrossFit games this year. And many people watching also, and not, not everyone has had an opportunity to grace the semifinal regional floor. So not everybody, I mean, they're going to try to understand, but they don't really understand what it's like to grind and to commit and to, to make this a lifestyle choice, not just for you, but your family and the team around you. And so I, I was just curious on your take on that, because we do see some people in the space already saying like, hey, I didn't make it. I gave my all. It didn't play out in my favor, but guess what? 2024, like I'm coming back. It's going to be my year. And I love that, man. I love that. I love to see it in our space because I know what it's like and how hard it is to commit to that. Um, so when you feel lit, lit on fire and willing to commit to it again another year, like it, it lights me up for people's joy, just training and. Yeah. hundred yeah, percent. It's a, it's a, it's a great thing, man. Um, you know, on, on another note in regards to your family, um, 
you know, as a father, there there have been there have been shots of you and your daughter doing the heart from you know you on the competition floor to her in the stands. Uh, what is it like being a high level professional CrossFitter at this stage in her life, and having her be a part of some of your sessions or being a being a fly on the wall when you're you're doing your training or even there on the competition floor? Yeah, man, it's um that moment with her was so special to me. That's gonna be what I remember. Um, yeah, it will. And- but I'll remember looking at her and her laughing at me as I had a little cry, you know. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just, it's just cool, man. Like I can't, I don't have the the words to articulate what it's like. But like bringing her out when I'm either training in the garage or, or having them run around the gym when I am training, like it's really cool to, for her to say, like, oh, daddy's got work, you know. Daddy's, daddy's going exercise. That's what he does for work. You know, we have a joke in the house, like I'm a professional exerciser. Um, it's just, it's a, it's a weird thing and people don't get it. Like CrossFit's a very niche thing. People don't really understand what we do, but to have them see that. And then what I hope is that they get habits from it. You know, I don't care if she goes to the gym or doesn't go to the gym, but I want her to build the habit of like resilience and continuing to show up and understanding things take time. And, um, they're the lessons that I'm trying to teach, not by words, but by actions. Mm. Yeah, that's so awesome, man. And I think that's so valuable. I love that you see the value in that, um, because I think that there's a there's a lot of parents that do their best and they do their best to insight wisdom or create discipline through their words. Uh, but when you get an opportunity to do it through your actions, you know, it's kind of like what we see in the affiliates every day. And I know we haven't talked about it quite yet, but you are, you know, the owner and founder of Snake CrossFit, man. Um which is a huge, huge thing because the business that you started in that facility is the catalyst to changing people's lives across the world. You know what I'm saying? And I I know that even as a gym owner, sometimes it is probably hard to kind of always see that because you're Mm -hmm. dealing with the riffraff and the nonsense and the making the budget align and getting new members and taking care of old members and all that other stuff. But it's like what you offer these people from a community and a place to train is just, it's, it's unlike anything else that exists in the world. Um, Tell me what, what brought this all about, Jake? So let's take a, a couple leaps backwards, man. How do you start CrossFit and what led you to starting Snake CrossFit? So I had a school teacher. I wasn't the best kid at school, nor the smartest. Um, and I had a PE teacher that was just into, into movement, into fitness. So as I had like free periods or anything like that, he would come and make sure that I wasn't doing, you know, anything mischievous. And he would say, hey, let's go train. Um, so I would go up and train and he was like, hey, is this CrossFit thing, CrossFit.com? So we'd go and do like fight gone bad in the gym at school with whatever we could find, you know, sometimes it'd be like bicep curls for the minute, things like that, you know, whatever. Um, so that's how I found CrossFit. And then I, I always just followed CrossFit.com right up until um, maybe somewhere around 2012, 11, I moved overseas to, uh, to play some rugby. And whilst I was going to the commercial gym, I had a guy that was sliding me um maybe comp train workouts at the time something like that like just you know met met cons um and they were a little little bit more structured than what crossfit.com was so i was starting to do more crossfit training um and before that though like i taught myself everything like i remember watching the games in 2011 trying to teach myself how to snatch with 60 kilos like just there, there was nothing available to teach at the time of that so as YouTube, I, man, that's all we had back in the day, bro. Even even right. those even those videos were hard to find back then. I remember in my garage, as I said, teaching myself to snatch, and my dad walked out and he's like, "Are you sure that this is safe? Like, you're good." And I was like, "Yeah, man, we'll figure it out." Um, <laughs> I love that he's just like, "Hey, are you are you okay?" Because yeah. it doesn't, it might not look like you're okay. I'm not gonna say it, but I'm just gonna ask you, "Are you okay, yeah. son?" That's awesome. Um, and I moved back to town after a couple of years abroad. And there was still no real option for CrossFit and I'd really fallen in love with it. So I just started again training in my garage and then I had one person come in and two people come in. And before I knew it, I had about 10 or 15 people training with me doing, uh, you know, like a CrossFit workout and some strength every single day. And then I got kicked out of there because of like noise complaints. (laughs) Yep. So I just rented a shed and I was training people for free, um, whoever wanted to train. And uh, at the time, I was a full-time plumber, so I, 
I leased the the building next door to my work. So I would go open the gym at whatever time and then I'd walk across and do my eight hours of work and then I'd come back. And, uh, and yeah, that's how, like I was affiliated before I'd even started charging people because I wanted to be able to do the open. Mm. So, so little things like that. And then I, over time, as I started having, you know, 10 people rock up at 5am in the morning, then it was like, all right, maybe I need to charge here. Um, so that, that's how it started, man. It was, it was never meant to be a business. I never, like I thought I'd be a plumber forever. Um, and it just evolved into people wanting to do things through the day and schools. And I wanted to start training and I stopped playing football and started chasing it. And that's how it started, man. That's crazy, man. I got to be honest with you. That's probably one of the most pure stories that I've ever heard about starting an affiliate. It's like, yeah, I just, uh, I just really like this stuff. I wanted to compete. So I leased some space. I wanted to compete bad enough that I was like, yo, let's start an affiliate because we needed to have an affiliate to compete in the CrossFit Open. <laughs> and then they, people just kept showing up, so they started paying me, and here we are. That's 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 amazing, man. I love I love to hear it. Um, what what's what's the biggest struggle? And and I'm not and I don't mean struggle. I would I would say what's the biggest um, battle with balancing being an affiliate owner and being a highly competitive athlete? Yeah. So in the beginning, it was time management. I think. Um, you know, you try when you open an affiliate, you try and do everything, man. Like you try and do the finances. You're the head coach. You're controlling programming. Um, you know, member retention, all these sorts of things. And then on the other hat, you put on after class is like the athlete. So you're trying to warm up. You're trying to work out and get all your hours in. And I was never leaving the gym. You know, um, and that was a real struggle. And that's when maybe two or three years ago, when I decided that. Um, this is definitely something that I'm doing because uh, I had had a knee injury. We decided that, right, we're going to put a, a manager in the gym and now we're going to control the business side of things. I was going to make sure we had a head coach and they controlled the coaching side of things. And my job was just to oversee the business, give input where it needed because I'd done it for so long, but yep. it was essentially theirs to run um, and I was just overseeing it. Um and that was probably the best decision I made in terms of um, as an athlete as well. It just really gave me freedom. You know, I didn't have to be at the gym at 5 a.m. anymore. Um, I could focus on getting those extra few hours of sleep, rolling in and training well. You know, it's funny because I think there might be – that might be a cheat code that you got going on right here. And I say that because I'm speaking from experience. I'm speaking for many friends within the CrossFit space. Letting go of responsibility and handing it to someone else is super hard. Mm. But it, but at least in this situation for you, Jake, you had a really good reason. You were like, hey, if I want to recover, if I want to train, if I want to compete, if I want to make the games, this is something I just have to do. I know it still had to be hard. Like what, how, how hard was it for you to just be like, okay, cool. Now I'm removed enough to give this other person their role and, and I'm really going to let them do it. Do you struggle with kind of wanting to be a little bit more hands on or was it pretty easy transition for you? Um. With the things that I'm not very good at, it was really easy. Uh, even even to this day, when, when we walk into the accountant's office and she says big words to me, I'm like, hey, <laughs> I do know what you're saying. Like, dumb this down. So I'm really good at saying, like, I, I don't know someone help. Uh, and that's where the, the gym manager came in, was actually one of my best mates for a long time. He was one of my first clients in, in CrossFit. And he moved back to town and he was sort of in between jobs. And I was like, well how about you do this? You, you manage this place and he does all the payrolls and all the taxes and all the things that I just have no interest in and no ability to do. Um, the coaching side of things was really hard for me to let go of because uh, it's just something that I'm passionate about um, movement in general and making sure people are moving well, moving safely. Um, but then I had to figure out the way to make sure that I was educating the person that was going to be doing it instead of just taking the reins. So once I figured out that was where my best asset for the gym was, then that that's where it became easy to let go of, if that makes sense. Oh, no. Yeah, I think it does tremendously. And again, I think, you know, the beauty is that you had the urgency because you wanted to compete. It aligned with that perfectly. And then you were able to see like, oh, wow, okay, I've, I've put other people in these roles that might actually function there better than I do. And I think that if you do it right, if you select the right people, then it really does end up adding strength to your community, not taking anything.
just as involved, just in different and almost more so. Uh, this might seem like a change, but you can be the the face of the franchise without coaching every class. You can still be the, the you know, the, the gym mascot, if you will, right? Because everyone's going to know it as, hey, this is Jake Douglas, Jim. He's a CrossFit Games athlete. Like, he's the nicest guy you'll ever meet. Um, but, uh, you know, John is my coach, right? But they still know that it's your brand and it's the thing that you built. Yeah, exactly. And and to be honest, like, I needed the time away from that stuff just after the COVID period and, and all that sort of thing. So it really, yeah, it took the business to, to strengths that it probably wouldn't have had if I kept trying to control everything. So these guys that came in actually uh, did a better job than I probably would have done and are, are still probably doing a better job now because they're really passionate about it. That's really cool. And where where is your where is St. CrossFit located? So we're in Tamworth. We're like um, sort of in between. If, if Brizzy was up here and Sydney was here, we're like down and across. We're sort of in between Brisbane and Sydney. Okay, very cool. And, well, folks, yeah. see if you're listening. You can go drop into Snake CrossFit, meet a great community. Jake might not coach your class, but he might hop in and do it with you. I don't know. I don't know. He might. He, he's getting ready for the game, so he's got to stay ready and stay uh, prepared for the unknown and unknowable. So who knows? Jake, I, I mean, we've been we've been grinding for a little bit, dude. I think I could keep the interview going for a long time. But I want to jump into these final five questions that I actually ask every guest that I have on the show. Okay. Yeah. And so I'm going to kick this off. The first one is, what was your most memorable open workout in the history of the open and why? In the history of the open, ah, oh, do you remember the um, overhead walking lunges, chest to bar, bar facing burpee workout? Oh, I remember that long, long, Man. long AMRAP. Yeah. Yes, sir. So for for a, a long time in CrossFit, I've been strong enough, but fitness has been a real issue to try and build my endurance. Um, and I did that workout at least four times, and I like. <laughs> guard from it man that that workout in particular is just i have nightmares about it yeah i, I want to say that was the 2016 open yeah and yeah that's the first workout maybe the second yeah i think it was the first and uh i can remember it being like yo this workout is so long you're gonna we're gonna get in so much work here i'm gonna be so sick of lunging with this barbell over my head that it's gonna drive me nuts right so i i completely agree and understand why if you did that thing four times mm -hmm. that had to be a rough kick in the teeth because that year was pretty metabolic overall and i mean like each week i felt like it was a was a was a punch in the gut because that was a year we did like very light uh, ground overhead. So essentially a muscle snatch and bar muscle ups in like a pretty short window. Um, I want to say that was the year we also did uh, the the first time we ever tested that squat clean toe to bar yep. double under combo. Yep. yep. So it was just like week after week, man, we were getting dosed up. I think we also did thrusters and bar facing burpees to finish that year. Yep. I one down. Yep. Oh man, that was that was a good one. That was good. We can we can thank Dave Castro for that, folks. If you're if you're nerds in the space like Jake and I, go back and look into the programming for the 2016 CrossFit Open. And hey, you know, why don't you try to just do all those workouts in like two days or something? Take some time, <laughs> hit a Friday, Saturday, get some buddies together and go through go through those tests because that's that's a doozy to say the least. All right, on to question number two here, Jake. What's your most memorable moment competing as a whole? So this could be open, semis, regionals, you know, local comp, anything. What really stands out to you? What was special? Definitely, maybe because it's the most recent, but just just qualifying for the games, man, that, that's easily the, the, the most special feeling that I've had. And again, being able to spend it with my family was, was awesome. Yeah. And, 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 you know, man, hey, you can't go wrong with that response. That was the one that I expected, of course. Yeah. And I think even our audience listening, hey, they're like, OK, I know what he's going to say. I know what yeah. I would say. So I think that's a that's a great response from you and one that one that makes complete sense. Number three is if you're a music guy and you're in the gym training, what's, what's playing on the speakers if you're in control of the if you're playing DJ? Uh, probably the game, eh? I, uh, I'm, I'm into rap when I'm um... – when I'm working out. So yeah, I like, uh, I like the game at the moment. Yeah. Okay. And that's, that's, that's some good hard rap. Get your mind uh, right. Have a nice little head nod, but the beats, the beats vibing. I get it. I get it. I, I, I love working out to rap. I like to vary my music. I tell all our guests, I vary it pretty regularly. Cause if I listen to like too much rap, 
or too much of one thing, it burns me out, right? Or I get too yeah. too much psychological arousal and I'm like, I already get juiced up for these workouts anyway. So I sometimes need to slow it down a little bit, but I, I, I'm a big fan of the rep too, naturally. Um, question four. Now this is a little bit of a, of a deeper question here. So take a second. What type of impact do you hope to leave on the CrossFit community? And that could be Snake CrossFit there locally, um, or it could be, you know, CrossFit as a whole. Yeah, no, this is a good one. I've thought about this one. Um, I think resilience, mm. perseverance, like those those kind of traits. As I said to you, like I'm not going to be that superstar 20-year-old kid coming through. And if anyone looks at my um, my rise in the sport, you'll see a very slow trajectory to the games. Like you'll see a, a 150th Open and then a not making, you know, like a, a not making regionals for a few years and then a 20th a 15th mm. 10th, a fifth, a third, you know, you'll, you'll see that kind of rise. Um, I'm, I'm not the guy that come in and, and busted the door down overnight, but um, I'm the guy that just kept showing up and even circumstance aside, you know, I, I still had to be ready for this year, whether Ricky Garab was competing or not, things like that. I, I still had to be there. So I think the lesson that I want to try and teach or the things that I want people to look at me about was like, he's not the best at anything, but the dude just kept showing up, you know? Hey man, I appreciate that lesson. And I think that hopefully our audience and our community would see that in you for sure. If they go back and they look or listen into this interview alone, getting to know you uh, on a deeper level, I think that's a, that's a great, great uh, intention on the mark that you want to leave on the community, man. Question five. And as an affiliate owner, you'll, you'll, you'll have a good, you have a good perspective on this, but if there's anyone in your life or that you know that might might walk by Snake CrossFit and they're like, hey, you know, that's not for me. I'll never look like Jake Douglas. I'll never do the things he's doing, so I shouldn't do CrossFit. What would you say to them to try to persuade them otherwise or help them see kind of the other side of our community? Mm, yeah, I mean, the first my first response to that would be like, why, why would you want to look like Jake Douglas or do what Jake Douglas does? Like, mm, come like, on. Oh, that's me. You're you. Um, that that would be my very first thing. Is like instead of focusing on someone else, focus on you. Um, so that that'd be my first response to that question. Then I think, yeah, I think there's le there's levels to that, right? Like there's levels to that question. But yeah, I'd really try and encourage people just to just to experience it because I think when you experience the power of like what CrossFit is and and how the the humility that you need to have mm. doing CrossFit, um, it just sets sets you up for so many different things in life. Like it's so important to continue to learn new skills because that then, like, if you're coachable, you know you, that means that you can learn things outside of that space too, right? Like I think that it's professional development in a way, um, you know. And then as as people start to run, maybe they haven't run for years and then they start running. It's how athletic you feel when you actually run. And then you trickle that down to being able to run around with your kids. So I don't know. I feel like I would, I would have a long conversation with someone about that, but my very first thing would, would be saying that, you know, comparisons are tea for joy, focus on you. Um, let's see what you're capable of. And then, and then go from there. Give it, give it a month. If you don't like it, leave, you know? Amen, man. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's a, I think that's a great response, man, and I think that that, that you're a great example of that. I, I love that to end our interviews um, with with that particular question because I think it always highlights how you know we love CrossFit. We begin CrossFit for many different reasons, whether it's to lose weight, gain muscle, look better naked, compete at the CrossFit Games. Um, but the bottom line is that it all comes back to the fact that this methodology and this community that we've built over the years is way bigger than fitness, right? It changes our minds. It changes our hearts. It changes. It brings that humility that you talked about, which is so important. If you're going to be, if you're, if you're going to last, you know, the race in this, in this sport, or even in this space on an individual pursuit of your health, um, you gotta be, you gotta have humility, man. Cause it's, it's, it's gonna, it's gonna come get you at one point or another. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It humbles yeah, us man. out every day. You'll be at the top of the leaderboard on Monday and then you'll be all the way back down on Tuesday. Like it's a, uh, it's a really, it's good for, it's good for humility. That's for sure. That's right, man. Well, Jake, I appreciate your time so much, dude. It's been an honor to get to know you. Um, you just gained another fan. I'm a big fan uh, of the Jake Douglas brand and uh, what you've, 
what you've persevered through throughout the years and getting to know you now just really affirm that for me. And I'm sure that every listener would agree. Um, is there anything new, anything going on in your personal life? Where can our, where can our, uh, you know, listeners and our audience, uh, follow you or is there anything that they can be a part of or know about in the near future? Um, just Instagram, to be honest, like underscore Jake Douglas underscore. That's basically it. I don't really do anything else. It's just, I just try, try and keep it as a diary. If anything, yeah, at the moment I'm just, uh, just focusing on training. So Instagram is probably the only place, um, that I've got really. Yeah. Okay. That's perfect, man. You're a busy man. You got a family and you got a career to continue to build. And of course, uh, your rookie appearance at the CrossFit Games to prepare for. So congratulations again, Jake. Thanks for uh, joining me today. And everybody that listened and joined us for this interview, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of More Than Fitness. We'll see you guys next time.